Right. So this is our first eToys how to um, broadcast. Mike is going to where are you going to, Mike? Uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, uh, this coming Friday, so um, in just a few days. Wonderful. So he's going to be taking uh, eToys down, some other stuff. I'm going to be going to Haiti next month. And Mike had a couple questions. So I have my screen share here and the one question he had is there's this really wonderful project from uh, Christine Morikawi's class she does she works at Columbus School for Girls um, and she has some lovely whoops yeah yeah so she has some, very impressive yeah yeah she's, she's great and she really the thing I love about her is she really gets the girls involved in developing lesson plans and I know yep. she's done a bunch of stuff including for Haiti so this is a really great lesson on music and Mike had a question the way this works is if you mouse over the things It plays the note, and Mike wanted to hook it up to Makey Makey, and hooking anything up to Makey Makey is really cool. So first, we'll sort of go in here, and we'll you right-click, you get the viewer, you click on the viewer icon, and you get the halo. So we see we have a ticking script right here, which basically means this script is always running. And if we drag it out, we can see when the star is under the mouse, it actually tests, then if the star is displaying, it does a bunch of stuff. So what Mike wanted to do was instead of um, using the mouse, which is nice, right, um, what if you wanted to use keyboards or makey makeys? So you could make a chord or something else. So if you go to the supplies bin and go to object catalog, and if we go to just for fun, because that's what eToys is, just for fun, I can take a key press, which is one really nice way of testing for keystrokes. So I'll drag that out, close this. Now, let me close, just click on that, which hides the flat for the viewer. Now, I'm going to pause this script for a minute. Now, instead of testing, um, is the stars menu done? So actually let me show you something slightly different for a minute um, because this will show you something else that's kind of interesting. What um, this uh, young lady did and it's very good, she drew each star. I can tell it's a draw because I have this little repaint icon uh -huh. as opposed to this one which has a recolor icon, and I got this basic, basically by taking a um, star out of here and thing and resizing it. So I knew it was a painting, all right? Um, and paintings are fine, it's good, but I wanted to do something that was more generic and make it easier for me to make notes, so I just used a polygon. Her method was great, it works wonderfully. So now I'm going to go here, and I'll close this script. Whoops, sorry. And let's bring this star script out, which is the same thing. I just copied her script, actually, because it was so well written. And now I don't want to test. I'm going to pause it for a minute. Now if I click and hold on normal, I can set it. Click and hold on ticking, I can set it to normal. You know, when a script run, normal means, you know, when I hit this um, little icon like this, that's one thing. You can also have a script run, it can be ticking, which means it's running all the time. Mm. Paused is on some of the things, you'll see a, a go button, we'll show you that later. And when you hit go, all pause scripts will start ticking, and when you hit stop, all ticking strips will pause. Um, on mouse down, so if I actually made this mouse down, right? it runs mm -hmm. and then let me get that back to normal somehow I have to stop it okay so oh I know why um, and mouse still down mouse up mouse enter or mouse leave you know and which you know another way to do this is I could have it run on mouse enter 
And then I could have had a separate skip done mousely, but let's get back to this. So she's testing, is it under the mouse? Well, I don't want to test if it's under the mouse. I want to test if the key is pressed. Now, right now, this is key A. If I actually click in here, I can press a new key, and I can make it S. I can make it click again. I can make it D. I'll use A, because that, that's fine for now, right? So now, if I get the viewer for key press, if I go to input, I can see key is pressed. And I can t it says false, so I can tell that's a Boolean, which you know I can't really set because there's no little arrow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this star is under mouse, and I'm going to go if key is pressed, the current key is pressed. If I sort of drag it in there, there we go. Uh, no, I hit current key, sorry. I dragged the wrong one. That was the old method of doing it. Uh, so if key is pressed, uh, let me go. there we go. Now if I hit ticking, right? now if I hit the A key, oh, cool. now you'll notice also when I hit A, this, the A, it highlights, so I can sort of visually see it. All right. Now, one other modification I did slightly to um, the really nice script she did is she, what she did is, if you look at her star do script, mm -hmm. you know, she had, uh, actually, I modified that already. Let me take another one. Let me take this one. If I look at her sound script for the ray, she actually has the frequency, 587.3. If yep. you remember that number, that will be helpful. So instead, what I want to do is do a couple things. So two, one is I'm going to actually embed this key in here. All right? And if I just drag it over, it doesn't embed. I move the star, the star moves, right? It didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so one way to do this is to put it right over. Well, let's just do it that. And then if I right-click on the key, I can click on its menu, and I can hit Embed. And I can embed it in the page or the star or the book or the test app. I'm going to embed it in the star. And I don't want a slot. And honestly, I've never figured out what slots do exactly. But now I can move the whole thing, and it's all one unit. Mm -hmm. So now, if I make a, so this is, let me close this one. So now if I go back here, you can see I have two variables. You know, the is playing was um, the variable that the young lady did, which was, I, at first I'm like, oh, that was a mistake, but actually it was very good. But, so I actually, instead of putting the 523 in there, I actually entered the value. So now, if I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sibling copy of this, which I just do by holding down a shift key, right? If you click on here and you hover over duplicate, one thing is to make a copy, the other is to make a sibling. And the, the difference is with a sibling, two things happen. If I make a change in the script of any one of the siblings, it changes all the scripts doesn't change the variables. The variables are unique, the way the scripts runs, but that's kind of nice at times. So now I'm going to change this one to S, which happens to be right next to D. I'll change the text to Ray, mm -hmm. right? And then I'll just recolor it to the color she used because she had a nice color scheme. Okay, we'll recolor this one too to match hers. Right. And now if I hit, whoops, now, now it didn't quite work because I didn't do it quite right. What did I do wrong? Um, let's see, let's look at the script. This worked earlier. So this is key pressed. And this is key press. And this one is, uh, this is also key press. Interesting. But if I actually drag this here, 
Let me see if that works. Oh, it did. Okay. It does both of them. Interesting. Oh, because I made a sibling. So forget everything I said about siblings. I should make a copy. Okay, now if I make this S, now if I hit S, and then what happens? Okay, now I have to fix my script. Bear with me. As you'll learn soon, a lot of things we do wind up doing abandoned. Okay, so let's get pause that. Let's get rid of this. And this is live and not Memorex. So I go to my A. Alright, so I go to key press, I go to input, is key pressed? Get that ticking. Now if I make a copy, S. Now if I hit S, okay, but it's playing the same note because I didn't change the frequency. Now I can change the frequency, do I think 583? Which I believe was the other for me. Now, now if I hit S, so I can do that. So that's basically how you can use a key to function this. And then, of course, I probably did, don't want to see this, so I can hide it. I forget where hide is, so I could just type hide and search. And oh, there's the key press hide. And click it there. So that hides it. I may want to show it again for now. Okay? Well, the key, that key object, because one thing I learned from before in deconstructing projects was the player's palette. So when people do tricky things like embedding or hiding things, is that a good place to go and see where all the parts are? Exactly. So uh, say I accident... Now this, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but if I hid this... yeah. Right? I think what Mike is saying is a good point. I can sort of come here and players. This will show me all the players, I'll say, currently visible. Mm -hmm. Right? Now I can scroll down and say, oh, I see key press. It shows me this little curse custom shows me a cursor. So the fact that it's blank means I know it's hidden, actually. Uh -huh. so click on it, it reveals. See how it blinked and revealed it? Uh -huh. Excellent. Right? And then if I click on this one, which one says, oh, that's that one. So if I did hide it and lose it, that's a great point. Thank you. I can just go back here, click, and then go show, and boom, it comes back. So that was a good point. So this is how you could do, now if I hit A, I could also, now the nice thing is I can hit two notes at once. Ah. Uh -huh which is dissonant in this case, but it works. Well, right. that, that, that would have been my question because, and I've seen this before, eToys, if you call it multi-threaded or, or what, but it's very responsive in the case of Makey Makey. People can be mashing the external objects in all kinds of random ways, and eToys will keep up. Yeah, the only thing you have to worry about, and it's not a restriction of eToys, but when you're using keyboard input, um, and even the Makey Makey, because I did some tests with this, and I, I well, try it with Makey Makey. But different keyboards can sense only so many keys pressed at the same time. Mm. Because in order to save money, rather than having a separate set of wires go through each key, they actually have some wires go across multiple keys in such a way that they use less copper, which, you know, every... Paisa, you know, or, or peso saves you saves you money if you're making millions of these things. And depending on the quality of the keyboard, you can only detect so many keys pressed at the same time. Mm. You know, a really good keyboard is five. I forget how many with the XO. I don't know if I've tested it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that was it. The Makey Makey may solve that problem because, in effect, I think what it does is it goes right to the keyboard buffer um, through the USB. So it, in effect, is its own keyboard. So it can probably send the byte codes for each of the keys at the same time. Um, yeah, that was that was neat. So that is how to use key press to 
do that. Right? And then you can have chords. Whereas here I just sort of made copies of these and oh, neat. Yeah, but but this is a really cool project. I mean, if you have a chance to go to Columbus School for Girls, um, they did some wonderful yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's incredible. The holder. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what this young lady did is is really, really impressive. I mean, you know, and and what she did to to detect how long to play the note, which I thought was really nice, is based on the length of the block. Now, now Mike made a really good comment, you know, when he said, um, "Hey, I'm I deconstructed a bunch of projects and I figured it out." And that's a really good way to find something. Find a project you like and go, "How the heck did they do this?" Well, how do I know what they did? Well, you can sort of see this thing here, which is from the supplies grin. Remember, I think I talked about pause scripts and running scripts. So if you hit go, it starts all pause scripts. If I click here, I can see what scripts she actually has running, which is a lot of them. All right? And then when you hit go, they all change to ticking. But how did each of these work? Well, I'll actually, let me get this back. So one way to look is if you see something like this, you can click and you can actually click here and open the script scripter and I could see the script so this is the script for the holder which is this little brown thing and basically it has a timer and when the timer is greater than holders until and what she does is she sets the holders until to the current time if you will holder timer plus the holders player at cursor width um, which is basically whatever little square I'm on it's width divided by 150 because she probably figured divided by 150 got her the timing you wanted. Mm. Right? Now, another neat thing is I could change this by clicking on it and making it 100 and play differently. I can also go up one. And the other thing is, which I just found out like weeks ago, if I click on this and hold and mm. just move up and down, you can actually change the numbers that way, sort of like a slider, which is nice. And then the other way to find the script to deconstruct something is to go in here. Boom. And then if you click on the category, you go to scripts, you can see what that one doesn't even have one. That's right, because it's the holder that's doing the thing. So I have to go to the holder. And then I have play song, so I just drag it out and I can see the script. Yeah, so she did some really cool stuff. So um, this was nice too. Mm -hmm. And the other thing she did that I thought was really cool was a um, start over. She used maker buttons. Yeah. Was, right? Yeah, build um, your own. Yeah. And you can build, which if you go to the object catalog and you go to connectors, um, you just hold out a maker button. And whatever I drag into this, it basically makes a copy machine. Mm -hmm. So when I click on it, oh, I get a copy of it, a copy of it, et cetera. So I can sort of drag these in here, boom, 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 and then, whoops, don't worry me, and then I can play it. And you can see they highlight, which is basically showing the cursor moving from step to step. Mm -hmm. You can start over. Just if what does start over do? Oh, it's a button. Let me look at the script for this button. Oh, that's interesting. All right, I know what she did, but um. It has a, when pressed, basically she removes all from the holder. So whatever's in there goes away. Oh, okay. Um, there used to be a button in the flap up here in older versions, and it was really confusing on how you hook it up. Mm. So a simpler way, if I want to make a button for something, if I have a script, and I'll just make a script where this turns, right? If I click here, I can button to fire the script, and then... That does it. And then if I hide the script, if I right click and click here, it shows it again. That's all. Um, so that was very clever. And then obviously I can put it in here and change the width and the note plays longer. All right. So that was that. Um, and I talked to Christine at the um, San Francisco Summit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just. It was. It's good to, you know, uh, remind ourselves that the intent of her posting all of this online is, you know, for this to get to Zambia and uh, 
and Haiti or anywhere else, and so I'm I'm going to be projecting some of these projects in the um, Lubuto Library workroom where I'll be teaching um, all next week, and then also I really enjoyed the what the girls made in the way of their E Toys Basics book. It's I mean I would read the stuff from E Toys Illinois or the Standard Reference if I want to intellectually understand what's going on, <laughs> but her, her the, the students really made it kind of like you know, like my, my nine-year-old daughter would read it, you know, and it doesn't get into all the whys. It's just is enough to say, here's what you do, and here's how what's going to happen. Oh, that's very cool. So we'll post those, the link for Columbus School for Girls stuff um, at the bottom of this video when I figure out where it's broadcast. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just see that Twinkle that's Twinkle Little Star could become, you know, a Zambian, you know, children's song. You know, I don't know one offhand, but... You know the kids I'm with will, and um, you know I don't know that we'll have time in the workshop, but just going forward, you know that would be a beautiful adaptation is to, to do a native version. Oh yeah, that 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 would be wonderful. That's a great idea. So um, the other things that uh, Mike showed me some stuff when we were talking about quizzes and quiz tools. So basically what I built and you know, like anything, you know, it took me like ten tries to figure out what was the best way. First I'm like, well, I could put it in a holder, but the holder has to make sure it's got to auto do it. So that didn't quite work. You know, if I make the holder wide, then it goes in, it'll do it. But I didn't like that. So then I did um something a little different and then it resizes, but and then on try about six, I think I finally got something right. So I basically set something where you can have multiple answers. And if I put an answer in here, and if I don't like it, okay, then I'll just switch it back like this. Oh, neat. Right, and it goes in, and this goes in, I can switch it around, and it switches back and forth, and I can put everything back to the original position. Mm-hmm. And I can also set the original position. So if I do it now, right now I go back, they go to whatever position I did. Mm. And then the other thing is I can even put them now, once I take them out of this flap and put them up here and set this as the original position, which is very important because otherwise... Oh, that's a, that's a book inside a flap. I just am noticing that. Yeah. Right, because it, it's basically meant to be a tool. So I'll, I'll build it, mm. copy this stuff, you know, into my book up here, say, right, and then set the original positions. And the thing is, right now, if I go back to original position, it goes up there, <laughs> okay. right? Because what happened? So what the heck is going on, and how the heck did that work? That was a. All right. So what I did is, let me bring this up. All right. So first thing is, I actually manually set width because holder didn't work for me. So I have a ticking script. It says if the play field count is greater than one, I move my cursor to one, which is basically the first item, and I set the play field width to the first player's cursor at width, which is, you know, the first item in there. It's width plus 20 and it's length plus 20, so I basically make it a little bigger. And then I move the player to the leftmost edge plus 10 and the top minus 10. So just basically position it within. And then if there are more, the way I got it to pop out, right? So actually, let me show you something actually very cool. So now if I, let me get a long answer. Yeah, that's it. Um, so if I put this in, right? It, if I hit this button, I can actually step through my scripts. So first to test, is my count greater than or equal to one? And there's one item in there, so it's one. And that's a new feature of eToys 5, right? Right, yep. exactly. Thanks to Ricardo Moran, who yep. really did a bunch of amazing things, including speech bubbles, which are a blast. So then I set my cursor to one, which basically means I'm referencing the first item in there, because there could be multiple. And now I'm going to set the width to width plus 20, right, which made it bigger. I'm going to set the length to length plus 20, which it was before. I set the left to 10. I guess it just executed that. I moved it to the top, 
And now it's going, are there two? No, fine. Mm. So that's actually a nice way to sometimes to debug scripts. So now if I can put these here, I'll put this one here. Now I've got two things. And whatever the last one in, I think, becomes number one. So it's one. Goes through, sets, moves it in position. And then what it did is it said the play fear cursor back to original position. Mm. So what I did is each of these, so if I wanted to make a third or a fourth answer, right, what I would do is I would, in this case, I would definitely make a sibling. And this is what I did. So if I have to tweak something later, change in one changes all scripts. It's a lot easier. Mm. And then I would also make, and I make a shift because I hold down the shift key when I make a copy, right, or duplicate it. Mm -hmm. So now, um, and now of course I can make this up, right? And now I set original positions, boom. Um, and of course, because I did not leave this script running because I was playing with it, now it works. Okay. And actually, so I did it here, right? And you'll see this cursor's, it's not running. The script isn't running. But if I go here, if I click on ticking and I hold it, I can apply this status to all my siblings. Now they're all running. Because now, let's get rid of this. If I go here and I click it, this one's ticking where it wasn't before. So I can stop and start all of them at the same time, which is kind of nice. So, all right, so the original position, if you look at the answer, this was rather hard. I created a player variable, which is extremely useful. So, which is basically, if I click here, I can create an object. And I'll just call it um, my player for now. Right? Whoops. I, now, what it does is it actually created a number by default. Let me modify that. What I meant to do is create a, I can create a Boolean, a color, right, a graphic, etc. I'm going to create a, you know, let's just do this, a color, right? And I accept it. Now you can see it's a color, which I can sort of pick actually any color in the field. I'll make it that color, right? But no, what I want is a player, right? Now if I accept it, now what that means is, now just for fun, I'll do a, forward by five, right? Now if I hit forward by five, what happens is my answer goes forward by five. But I don't want my answer to go forward by five. I want my answer's player. So to set the player, you know, I mean, one way is just click here, and it goes to crosshairs. So I'm going to make this. Now you see it's sort of a green thing. And then if I drag this tile right over answer, so instead of my answer 5, which is my current object, my answer 5 player moves forward by 5. Now if I hit this, that moves. I can click here and make this button move for all I want, right? Or actually, I guess I clicked on the text, which is, I'll fix that later, or the string, right? Um, so that's what I did. So now, if you look at this script again, let me bring it out here. Right. And uh, there's a button to show hide the scripts, which I put a bunch of them in so I can hide it or show it. You know, it has our answers five original holder include answer five, which is basically like embedding something, right? So a lot of things when you, you can include things in a play field. But if I do include, there was no tile found. So where the heck did I get that and how the heck did I do it? This was, so what I did is, I went to a play field, which actually has um, a category, some don't, called collections, which says, how many things do I have embedded in me? Right now, there's nothing. And right? if I drag my thing, ah, and you notice my cursor, right? Mm -hmm. I used player at cursor before, too. So then what I had to do was basically, let me get my script back. Where, oh, here it is. Oh, there, there's my answer five script. Okay. So... Um, there's an include there, right? But I don't want to include um, the playfield nines thing. What I want to include is 
let me get my viewer here, which is this is just another way to get my answer five viewer because I forget which one's answer five. I want to get my the player I used to in well uh, to include um I don't know, I'll have it include uh let me get a rectangle. Right, and then I can take that whatever I wanted to include. So that's a way. To, that's how I got that thing in here. So it was a little more than a little tricky to get set original position working, mm. but um, it does work. So th this is like one way to do quizzes. So what I sort of envisioned is this flap. If you click here and I go shared by all projects, so now I can go back to the beginning, make a new project. You see my quiz tools is still there. I'll do a book, right? Put my quiz in. I'll come up to quiz tools and, you know, okay, so I've got answer one, answer two, answer three. And now what I'll do is. I can even just drag these up in here. I wouldn't drag them because I'd want to keep them. So I'll make a I have to make a sibling copy in this case by holding down shift. And and that can be that can be be um a button, correct? Like can you can so you have kind of the seed with the, the scripting that you the core scripting and then can't a a make sibling button be be created. Yeah, that that's actually a good point. I mean, it's sort of the what do you want to make hard and what you want to make easy. And I think in this case, our goal is to make quiz making as easy as possible for the constructor, not teach them all the ins and outs of e toys, which are wonderful to learn. Well, no, but I think that's what I like as I learn more about e toys is that it is so. I mean, it's different from Scratch, for example, where you know, it's very easy to dig under the hood. Um, I, I love that you have the flap, and I think a, a, a use case would be, you know, it's a teacher. She's she's seen a demo of the polished, you know, quiz flap capability, and and mm -hmm. she's knocked over by it. And it's eleven thirty at night, and she's got to do a quiz for class tomorrow. And you know, the flap comes up, and there's one holder, and there's one button. You know, she clicks something and says, ah, oh, it's going to be six questions. These are the matches, and I want to score it and, you know, drag them into my book and do, you know, ten of these. Um, but I think the beauty of this is that, you know, then you, she or the kids could get fancy later on, right, and have, you know, the, the tile spinning or um, vibrating or the, the, the hidden correct uh, payoff response can be any kind of surprise that you, yeah. that you can make. Yeah, I... Yes, and I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, and the simplest way actually to do that would be to have a page set up with a quiz mm -hmm. where I'll just, you know, make this, you know, I mean, obviously, well, the simplest way to do it is, would be to let me think. Yeah. If I actually take all these mm -hmm. and then give me a minute. Let me think about it for a minute. Yeah, I mean I would make a simple quiz somewhere on a page where I would go like this. I'd go like that. So those are siblings, right? Or Right, I'm making siblings, but I would just, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. Um, I would do that and this, and then I'd make a page like this. I'd have my one page, two page, three page, and four page answers ready to go. Ah, okay. Right, and then what you can do is you click this, and once I've got it set, mm -hmm. right, I'll change my answer to whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then I go back here. Let me set my original positions for whatever reason. Uh, by the way, if you want to align it, if you hold down Shift and drag, and then I click here, I'll just pin it because I'm going to do two things. I can align left edge. Let me move this over. I can align left edges, and I can distribute vertically, which distributes them evenly. I, I align it. I'm all set. I set my original position. And, you know, here is, I'll just go duplicate this page. You see it's page two of two. Oh, yeah. oh cool. And, you know, you know, this is uh, what is the meaning of life, right? And I'll just move this over here somehow. Now let's put it here, right? And then now I've got that, and this still works. Boom, and it goes back to the original, goes back to the original. And then I might also take a copy of this button, right, and play with that. So I, what I would do for that, and I'll, I'll put one together, is I'd create a couple pages with different answers, and then I can just duplicate the pages. And then the other, I'll duplicate it again, and let's just make this slightly different, move stuff around so you can see it. So after I've done that, I can also sort pages from the book menu item. And I can change the order just by moving these around. Mm -hmm. Right? So now my one, two, three are slightly different. Mm -hmm. So that would be the way I'd do a quick quiz. I'd take something that's already in quiz format and just do it, which would take a little more scripting. What I, I think I'm missing is uh, we had just touched on in, in the email mm -hmm. earlier uh, was that you know, so what we're seeing here is four slots, and there's going to be four answers, which obviously are not in any kind of one, two, you know, matching sequence. Mm -hmm. you know, top to bottom on the, the left is the same top to bottom with the answer blocks on the right. They're going to be mixed up. And um, so what we want is this, for the student to get all of them in the correct place in their correct sequence and then are there's I think I missed is there something in the background that is associating the correct answer with the correct slot I mean we're not just simply filling all four so if I wanted to do this and I'll I'll tell you what I would do I don't know if I'll do it all right now during the broadcast right right but basically what I would do is I go for this and let me see what variables I have I just like to see scripts, right? So I don't have any variables, so I'll create a variable and I'll call it um, my answer. Actually, let me show you. I, I have one that almost does it, all right? So I'll show you basically what I do. If I go to... Um, okay. So I was playing around with different ways to do word sorts, right? And one... So let me just get to the one that really does what we're looking for. Didn't you do a video on this? I haven't had it. Probably, but basically what I did is I set my values answer. So set one, which is I think this one, right, has a um, it has set 13 has a answer of an, right? So that has to an. And then what I can do is each text block, if you look at it, it also has a can threes and set with it. Now, if I change my, you know, so I can put a bunch of words in. So I have a variable in the text object and a variable in the play field object. And my dog is whining. I'll be right back. <laughs> So then all I would do is do a test, you know, if you wanted to see, did you get it right? So, like, I think this one's at. Okay, so I'll sort of put that in. Do you have any scripts here? Okay. So let's see. All right, so let me see if I actually made these siblings. We'll find out real quick. So I'm going to make a script and color. All right, so it's color is white. So I'm going to say um, check answer, right? 
And the answer is going to do a test, which I can get from my little treasure chest here. And my test is going to be if my answer equals my answer, well, not, whoops, not really my answer. What I want to test for is, if I go to miscellaneous, my holder's answer, Cantree's holder's my vowel, then I'm going to set, just drag it out, I'll make a duplicate of it. That's an easy way I'm showing, whoops. Right. If it is, then I'll make it um, uh, green. If it's not, I will make it uh, red, the classic color of mistakes for some reason. Right? Now if I click this, oh, it, it does equal, right? Mm -hmm. So that was can. Now if I actually take this and make a sibling copy of it, right? And I'll call this, uh, we'll make this one cat. Well, actually, let me check something real quick. Ah, I did make siblings, because you'll see Cat3 all of a sudden has a check answer script. Mm -hmm. Well, let me see. And this one, has a they both have check answer scripts, right? So now if I put this, whoops, in here, let me get rid of this one, right? Um, I can have a script here that says... If I go to scripting, I can tell all contents, which is like everything embedded side to me, to check answer. Now, you'll notice check answer has a space A instead of a check capital A, I and mean, that's a little funky. Um, so I'll draw that out into a script here. Now, if I check answer, that one becomes red because it's C-A-T not C-A-N, mm -hmm. right now, but of course I want to reset, so um, I'll put out a script here, I'll rename it by clicking here, I'll call it reset, because reset's always a wonderful thing, I'll look for color by doing it up here, I don't, I want, this is the color I'm looking for, and I'll make the color, I can pick anything on the page, white. Um, and now if I hit reset, boom, now, but, well, now I want another script here. I didn't want to just reset one. I'll do another tell all contents. Let's show it so you can see it. So I'll now drag another tell all contents, right? And now I'll do reset. So if I click that, boom, now they're all reset. Now I can check answers. So what did I do? I created a variable associated with a play field, right, which you can see here, its variable is my val, okay? And I created a variable with each of these, I'll just get rid of that, right, um, called my val. And then because each of these, now if I wanted to create a new word that works in my wonderful little world, I just shift click here and go there. And now I've got a new word, we'll call it cat. Now when I do that, I'm going to change my value to AP. Right? And I mean it could be a number, it could be whatever you want, but that just happens to be how I do it. So now I can put that in here, and now when I check answers, right, now of course, <coughs> I'd probably, you know, check all. I'll just call it just to something different. Now I can have a button to fire this script, right? And a, yeah, I'll call this reset all. And I can have a button to fire that script. I can reset them. I can check them. And now I have a bunch of nice different um, words and things to do. Mm -hmm. Right, and now I have get next word, which is interesting. I'll put that here. Now this actually, ah, this has a my value of app, and it also has a check all. 
So what I can do now is, because I made this all siblings, you know I only change scripts in two spots, this play field and this. Mm -hmm. Now if I tell my page to scripting tell all contents, I'll do one, two of these. Let me get rid of these buttons. All these, um, and now I'll do page. Uh, this one will be uh, check all. Check page, I'll just call it. Um, we'll have a button to fire this script. They checked every both of them, because this happens to be my AP set, right? And then I can also do my res reset all, which will be reset page. Now, all of them go white. Right, so I've got my, so I don't need these anymore, because they only do this one. Let me get rid of those. So now I've got this, and I can reset the page, check the page, and get next word, hat, I happen to know goes there, um, man. And what's making those? Do you have another process? Ah, what is hidden? Always, you know, we hate the invisible somewhere, so how can we find out what's invisible on this page? Well, Mike told us before, we can go to the holder and go to players. I mean, I know, so that makes my looking a lot easier. Mm. And what I have is a holder somewhere around here. Ah, there it is. So I knew where it was, so I actually just shift-clicked it. I just wanted to get the name. It's holder 7. So now if I go to holder 7 and I click it, oh, there it is. Mm. And now I have a hide. Whoops. And so you have to drag the script into the right spot. That was my bad. Um, so if I drag it here instead of on hold, and a show. Now if I show it. Um, oh, you stashed. I stashed it. Marks in there. <coughs> yep. Um, yep. but, but, you know, hide and so now I can hide and show my holder right um, and I can hide it and show it and those are my words and actually within here I have another one called reset mm. I think shuffle which basically shuffles all contents it just randomly rearranges them Mm -hmm. And I think so. So what did we do? We created a variable with the answer and a variable with its holder. So going, I mean, you could sort of do the same thing over here and make things go green or red. Um, you could do a count for the page where you can count how many were right, and based mm -hmm. on how many were right, you could show a number of spinning stars. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So one. Uh, and then I can make my star turn by five. It's spinning, and um, I could also make it. Uh, I could use scale and have set the scale. Let's see. Yeah. Um, let me pause it before it goes nuts. Normal. Um, increase by uh, 0 0.1. And then if I click it, it's going to turn and grow. Wait, I don't want it to keep growing. Hold on, that doesn't make sense. Let me get my scale factor back to 1. So what I'll do is I'll bring a test, because it's a test icon. And I'll test my scale factor. Right? If my scale factor is too big, let's say greater than, you know, 1.5, then I want my scale factor to, if I click here, the arrow means I'm setting it. I want it to decrease by 0 0.1. 
right? And if it's, I'll probably put another test and say, whoops. Uh, and then if my scale factor is uh, less than or equal to, I don't know, 0 0.8, then I'll increase by one and then just um, no, but that won't work. So I sort of have to do I'd have to play with that. I mean I see a bug in my logic right now. It'll sort of not do anything because it'll increase well, maybe not. No, if it's less than one point five. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, it's late. I'm not thinking. But you can make it grow and shrink and do different things, too. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you could also, or a nicer thing might be changing color. Um, so I can change its red by, I'll make it red. Uh, increase by one. Or better yet, have it be a random number between 1 and 100, right? Which is bizarre, and it seems to have disappeared, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Somehow I got it white. Oh, there we go, because it was increasing, right? And then you get... That kind of stuff. So you can show or hide any number of stars, right, based on the count of how many you got right. Mm -hmm. That would be a way to do it. Um, what else? And then uh, this was, I'll show you the thing. That was, yeah, I mean, so. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Right, radio buttons are very simple. Um, basically, it's using siblings again, where uh, on mouse down, I tell all siblings to uncheck, which sets their color to white, and I make its color green. So if I actually just if I right click and I do this over here, I've created an extra radio button. Mm. Yeah. All right, so that's a nice thing to do and then you know I forget what I was doing here I was doing some test with feet um, it's another way to do quizzes so what what else would you like to know I think that's it for today that's it from what I had yeah I had sent you uh, Kathleen took a shot at because uh, I wanted to, for myself to think of a variation um, of the quiz thing and uh, uh, our library science um, grad student for one of the Lubuto sites did a map of the Zambian languages. I just sent that to you about 10 minutes ago. Okay. And that, that was a variation where there, there was pre-drawn artwork uh, with color fill regions of the and the silhouette was the country of Zambia and then there are seven names, text files, and the idea was, you know, you could drag each one of the names onto the correct color field, and then the word correct would pop up. And so Kathleen made that happen. I think she was storing a variable w where, where when you drag the name on onto an incorrect color, you were okay. When it hit the correct color, it would increment the variable up, and then she would just count that once and then keep adding whenever there were subsequent instances of a different label hitting its appropriate color match. Um, but what seemed to be the issue there would be like a kid could just take that. There, there you have it. This is, yeah, this is what Kathleen mm -hmm. made. You know, could grab Lunda and just, you know, race it around the map until you got the hit once. And you know, maybe I'm reading the script wrong. So maybe when you look at it, you can see. Yeah. So, so, so in this case, it would be um, 
Oh, because she had this yeah. ticking, is my guess. Okay. And I'm just sort of playing. I don't know what she did, and I have no idea where Lunda is. Uh, the correct answer is on the, there's a key on the next page. I mean, not that you... Good. Uh, I, forget, I forget where they are. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So now I know where Lunda is. Yeah. Bear with me. Uh, let me move that up. Yeah, there. I gave her the key. Okay, so now I have Lunda, and if I put it there. Now, was it supposed to show up correct? Because I don't see it showing up correct. Well, the, the objective is you get, you want to get all the names uh, onto their respective color fields, and then the word correct would come up. Oh, so my score. Let me see. World score, oh, so you, so you start them all, and when you get it right, oh, okay. So, what I would do is, so you want something that once they place everything, then you put in the answer. Then you check the answer, then right? You say, yeah, you got them all in the right, yeah, in, the, in their respective spots. And she has a hidden, she hid the word correct on the lower right. So green. when score equals seven, right? I'll just make it seven that way. Correct. Okay. Um, and of course, you got to hide that. Okay. And I don't know that I saw it there. I guess maybe what I was thinking was there would you would like so the word Lunda. If you dragged it onto the purple, it would it would tick up. One, but if you pulled it off, it should remove the one. Yeah, and the other problem is with this script is, so you see, so if I run it, the score goes right. But if I put Lunda here, mm. which really is not in the right spot, but if I run it, my score, my score went to seven. That was impressive. I might have hit it. Oh, is, and it's still touching, right? Because they're right. Right. So. so that makes it even more of a challenge. So how the heck would you do this? So okay. So first thing I would do is I would not use text, which is what you seem to use, because for anything like this, I would go to connectors, and there is a text box, text rectangle. Mm. Um, and the advantage is, so I'll just type Lunda. All right? Now, if I click on this, it drags, and I don't change the text. I mean, uh. I can still change the text. When I'm done, what I would do is, if I click once, I get Lunda. If I click one, I get text. When I have my answer right, I would want to lock the text so the kids couldn't change it. Ah. Uh. Having said that, I mean... If you ever go to the E Toys Challenge, which is really cool, I've had, you know, get your car to the goal. I've mm -hmm. had kids drag the car on the goal. <laughs> and, and, and I just started plotting out, that is great. You came up <laughs> with a very unique solution. Now, let's see if you can do it, do it a different way, because you have to learn how to do things multiple ways. But anyway, um, so now what I would do is, all right, so then what I would do is I would get a very small ellipse. Right, and make it sort of about that size. It's kind of small. I don't know if you can see it. Right, I'd put it here. I would embed it in my text box. Oh, that was interesting. It's in there, right? Yeah, but it, it did it in a funky way. It didn't hmm. do it the way I expected it to. I think I embedded it in. So if I put it right there, and I embed in, it actually, uh, it's in, okay. Okay, so then what I would do is text box are even more interesting than I thought. So then I would put this in here. Drag that up. Right. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this also in my little play field. 
move it there, and I'll send to back, right? So now, whoops, I'm going to put it in. Okay, now it's and my play field, I have to get rid of resist being picked up, so when I click on it, it moves. I'm going to take this, get it together. I'm going to send it to the back. So it's there. And now, let me send this to the back just for a minute. OK, um, let's see if this goes. Oh, I know what I'll do. So bear, yeah, this is the joy of e toys. So what I'll do is this, and I'll embed this in my ellipse. Now I'm actually moving the ellipse, amazingly enough, right? Great. Now I can take the ellipse and test. Whoops, put it in the wrong script. And I'll test, is that overlaps uh, oh no, you want it to see the color, right? That's the way well, in this case it's a color, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> then click there and I click on that. Then um, world score. She did world. I would do this on a page. So the world she actually took is the whole thing. When anytime I'm doing variables like this, especially with a book, I do a variable for the page. So oh, I would do okay. pages score, right, and have it be a number. So initially my score is going to be zero, right, for my reset. Uh, well, uh, okay, so I set pages score to zero. This is this will be good, right? And then I'll say check answer. All right, now this is in the page. Okay, good. So now I will, so if that's that, I'm going to say pages score increase by one. So if I set that and then I get the page to scripting, scripting, scripting. Tell all contents, we're back to our tell all contents. Um, check answer. So now, did I bring it up? Sorry, let me get a watcher for pages score so I can make sure I got it. So just by clicking here, I can see my score. Let me get rid of a couple of these scripts. So now if I click that, oh, my score is not zero because it wasn't over it. Now, ah, oh, my, well, I probably did something wrong. My score is one, all right? So now I'll make a copy of this, all right? And then. Now I have my text. I'm going to unlock it because I really don't want it locked now. So now I'll say uh, K I I K. Get rid of this. K I I K. Okay. And then get a button to check answers. Right. Let's remember that. Now, where is that one? That is right there, okay. So now, see, it says ellipse, so now I can get my ellipses script, and for that one, my color is this. Boom. Now, I can move these, I check answers, and my score is two. Hey, if I move this here, my score is one. Sweet. And now if I change the label, because I don't want to use that, and I go check your answer twice. Um, check your answer. Boom, now I've got a button that says check your answer. I can make the button a little bigger. I can change the color of the button, you know, etc. Um, and now I'll show you another good trick I know. Uh, what's your favorite bird? Oriole. Oriole. 
So I'm going, oh, that was nice. That was a beautiful picture. Uh, there's a nice Oriole. Let's see if this works. So the joy of eToys in the browser, I can just drag a picture of an Oriole in here. Mm -hmm. Because I like to make my colors look really, really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, oh, he hand painted these, right? Well, all right, let's work it. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to use fill, my favorite buddy, and I can fill the color and I, let's see if this works. All right. Well, if this was... So you're saying another approach would be to have uh, constructed that out of out of like vector, like polygons or... Yes. And where I was sort of going is... A great way to get a set of colors, and I, I met this, this color designer named Svet. He gave me this tip. He goes, have you ever seen an ugly bird or flower? I go, no. <laughs> he goes, take a picture of a bird that you like or a flower or a scene in nature that's beautiful and take the colors from the bird or nature and use that as your palette. And what I'll do is, I'll just sort of keep this for now, right, is I will create a series of rectangles. Right, now I've got one two, three, four, ah, uh, that's fine, I'll put that there, right? And then I'll take all these wonderful rectangles I just made, and hopefully, sorry, gotta get that. Okay, so now I can, I will drag them, select them all, and I will place them in a row. I've got a nice set of things. Now I'm going to take this one and I'll use, let's see, like a nice black. And I'll take this one and that's a lovely orange. And I'll take this one and slightly lighter. Well, let's go with it. That tail feather looks beautiful, right? And then maybe the beak. I don't want like a complete white. Oh, I think I'm nice. It. Right? And now I've got a great color set. And the other thing I'll do with kids is I will tell them instead of doing this, which is nice, I mean the first time I did this, all right, is I'll take a magnifier, right? Now that magnifier is actually following wherever my thing is. So now if I'm looking for a color, I can say, well, let me um, actually show pointer, right? So it's right in the middle, right? So I know where the pointer is. Now if I take this, I can sort of see where I'm picking my color from right about there, right? And so when, my sort of point in doing this is I never looked at a bird as much as when I had a magnifier of it <laughs> and I was picking colors. So just by accident, because I started doing this, I started noticing the colors of birds much more, um, which is kind of nice, right? And if you really want, you can change the magnification up to, let's say, four. And now you can really look at the birds and see the, the shape of their beak, its eye, the little pieces over there. I'm sure if I look if it was high enough resolution, I could see tear ducts, etc. Um, so I digress. But um, yeah, you you could do it that way. This is a painted picture, which is fine. Doing it with a polygon, and you, if you can find an SVG picture that's really well done, you know that's obviously great. Uh, okay. Yeah. But so now what I do is for my colors, I'll go here, right? And now I've got that color, and that's like, oh, that one worked well, right? So then I'll go here and I'll pick another color, red. And I've got my paint fill can and I filled that one, right? Um, you know, you just have to be careful because there's certain spots where it doesn't fill all the colors, which could cause incorrect answers. Yeah, but, and that, that probably at one time was like a dither gif or something. They reduced the color palette and it just got crusty, so. Yeah, so we'll leave the Orioles because I like Orioles too. Um, so that is how you could do... Scorekeeping. I'll send him to the back. Right? So what I did is I keep the score in the page because that way each page has its own score. Right? If you wanted to do total score, you could do it for the book. 
you could add a variable to the book. So the page has a score, and the page, you know, oh, basically. Okay. Right? I added a variable there. Page has a script which tells all, sets the score to zero, tells all its scores, all, everybody to check answers. So any object in here which has a script called check answer, which, you know, happens to be these ellipses, will check and, you know, if I'm over the color I'm supposed to be over, blah. So that's a way to do it. And you can make a button any size you want. I can even change this string, yeah, I mean, etc. That's very so. That's so tricky and uh, clever. So the the little um, ellipse that you put under the label is kind of like a probe, which is it's big enough to you know to, to to find the spot. And as you if you increase the white text label that's on top of that is embedded embedded in your ellipse. Did that is that going to go off center? I mean, I, I guess it's not. It's not going to change if I make those labels right. bigger. So if you made the label bigger, oh, I made the ellipse bigger. Yeah. Right? yeah. So what I could do is if I click here, so I don't want text. Okay, I got my Kilakaluli who thing. So now I can sort of see it and see see the little ellipse mm -hmm. behind it. So the way I would deal with that is, okay. I would say that, you, I mean, you don't have to do this. I think just doing it by hand is fine. Mm -hmm. But if you really wanted to get, um, so if I click on this and I show, I'm just checking something. I'm showing show direction arrows, which sets, see that little thing in the middle? Mm -hmm. So that is its center of rotation. So I can actually drag its center of rotation off here. And if I go to basic, I've done this, believe me. It, it drives me nuts. Well, actually, no, it's because it's text. Uh, direction arrows. There we go. So I'll drag that off over there. There you go. And now if I turn it, it's actually turning around that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thing which way off. So. Now I got it, so I'll make sure, I would make sure, you can make sure that's in this, oh, because I didn't, so to get it to move, I have to hold down shift and then drag it right in the center, and it normally is, so it's heading to zero, so it it up, and then, and then I got to move its, whoops, so if you actually click on its arrow and drag, it Changes its forward direction if I get it right. There you go. Boom. So, I mean, you could actually write a script if you wanted. I think it's overkill, even for me, mm. um, to set the x, y. To, well, it's actually fairly simple. So I'll set its x, I'll set its y to its own x and y. Which, Steve, what the heck are you doing that does absolutely nothing? I mean, right? Well, I don't, I'm going to take its holder, which is what it's embedded in, and I'm going to set it to its holder's x and its holder's y. Remember, we embedded it in an ellipse. So now if I take this, I'm just going to move it, right? So it's not there. Now if I run this and if I get it right, boom. Now I know it's centered, right? So I could have a thing that says center. You know, so if you were worried, and I don't think it would be, I think it would be fine. Even if I did, you know, this, mm -hmm. actually that's pretty good because now mm -hmm. I would want a center. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Right? So I would sort of take, you know, um, and you can have tell all content center, I mean, however you want to do it. So that would be a good idea, actually. And as a cleanup, you could could you go in there and noodle out the emit so make the white transparent, make the ellipse transparent and borderless, and and the and the the square borderless so there's only text and everything. Right. So I can make. Um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, because I click the ellipse. So if I if I take this, yeah, I mean I can make it. I can hide the ellipse so you don't even see it. Oh, okay. Which is fine too, right? 
I can make this have round corners because rounded corners on these text boxes always look nicer in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're right. You can also go to fill in border. Um, I can make its border bigger. Or ooh, that's because that's the ellipse. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So I can make the text box border fill in border um, bigger, smaller. I can make it zero. All right. Uh, you can change, let's make it, you know, a couple somethings. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually if you click on this just one, three times, I get it. If I click on color, oh, it doesn't show me. Interesting. Okay, and then if I click on it, I clicked on this, which pinned it, so I can sort of move it around as I'm doing it, because maybe what I want is, you know, not quite there. Um, We'll make it, yeah, and you're right, I can sort of make it transparent. Mm -hmm. And then I can pick a color, and if I hold my mouse down, it can be any color on the screen, mm -hmm. like my old Oriole friend. Um, or, let's make it white. Uh, okay, so if I click on this plus, it actually shows me this, and I can get more controls, which is kind of interesting sometimes. And I can do different border styles. Let me, let me give it a color so the borders look better. Right. So like this, like this, like mm -hmm. and different things. Um, drop shadow or not, which I think uh, they use. Etc. So you can do something like that. I mean, it's whatever you want to do. Make one, pick your colors from a bird, and just make copies of it. So again, this ties back to your idea that if you're always pulling siblings or maybe semi-automating that, um, you know, the complexity is encapsulated in that, that branch of siblings, which is beautiful because you can grab any of those and change a property, and, they, and, it, and it just zips across that branch of siblings and uh... right and and just as a side note one of the things I try I teach I'll call it programming or computer science but you know ways of thinking to kids it's usually you know in the form of a programming class and one of the, the things I try and drive across is what is the simplest set of thing with with this couple small tools you can really build amazing things mm -hmm. the hard part is finding out what those small tools are. So if you design your object once and you can use it multiple times in multiple places, um, you can create really amazing powerful things. So siblings is really nice. I mean Scratch, the new 2.0 with clones, mm. I mean they have some beautiful stuff you can do in a lot nicer UI way in my opinion compared mm -hmm. to eToys. But eToys is a heck of a lot more powerful. And is there, are siblings, and, and so this approach, which is beautiful, of duplicating, mm -hmm. you know, the blank and then the object that fills in the blank, um, is that ironclad? Do this, so the siblings, there's no way to break that, right? I mean, um, I, I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, as it is, just, I mean, I'll have to watch this about five times, but, um, I, you know, I have to go back to that, you know, the um, the player's, Mm -hmm. inventory because you know it just gets geometrically complex if you're not the person making yeah. this and you're trying to figure out you know and I think I think you alluded to it uh, a while back is, is it's just always better to start with you know pre-made templates at least with this type of thing with you know three answers four answers five answers you know and 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 then and then go back and customize as needed yeah, and you know the, the the beauty is you can look inside if you know where to look, and if you don't care and you just want to use it to do something else, that's fine too. Um, yeah, I got to think about that. I mean, the hard part is, I mean, you're going, you're talking to teachers, and you know, I love this stuff. I 
I, I use eToys for everything, including presentations, taking notes at meetings, diagramming ideas. It's like wonderful. I eat my own cooking. Um, but not everybody's like me or like you, right? You know, hey, I just want to create this quiz. Give me a simple tool, right? And that's fine. You know, they, they're expressing themselves in ways that, and they'll take time doing things like these maps or that beautiful uh, thing the Columbus School for Girls did. And, you know, that's, that's okay too. Well, I think it's a win because at least if there's, and that's where it's effort on somebody's part to and to make like take what you've everything you've shown me here and you know uh, you know and package that and document it in a you know quiz toolkit that can work in eToys and 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 popularize it, disseminate it, and. You know, yeah, it, there's I, two I, beautiful ways to yeah, do it, right? Yeah. You know, one thing is everybody should go click on the little thing, yeah, and play with Kathleen Harris's wonderful um, about menu tools, right? On yeah. how to use the different things, and they're short little books that give you wonderful tutorials on how to make different things and use different pieces of eToys. Yeah. So that's one way to learn. Um, the other is Kathleen Harris again. Put together harness. harness. Sorry, you're right. Sorry, my apologies, Kathleen. Um, <laughs> put together some beautiful one, two minute videos. Yes. Music that have absolutely no words, show, but show you how to do a lot of wonderful stuff. I just looked at Tic Tac Toe. That was that was amazing. Yeah, she she's uh, she's got a beautiful eye. Um, so that's another, and I mean, the other way is sort of what I showed you before, right? You know, on the how did you do that, you know, especially for OLPC deployments, they don't have high bandwidth internet access. They pro some of them don't even have internet access at all, right? So what do you do? Yep. Yep. So, you know, one thing you could sort of do if, is, hey, here's eToys, right? And I'll create an event th theater where I'll do a record, and I'll go. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, Kathleen. I got to give the background. Dun, 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 dun. This might mess up on playback, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> it's slowing down. No, yes, it is. I think my computer froze. Okay, so anyway, um, oh, that worked. I'm going to record again. All right, so, uh, and I will, if I can click on, and anyway. I was, you could do an eToys video and basically play it back within eToys exactly what was done. Yes, your point of this, that's what's happening, yep. And I did a terrible job of that, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and to your point about bandwidth, so that th this is, uh, uh, the motion tracks numerically in encoded as opposed to, you know, um, a whole stack of pixel images that are that are in a giant movie. Right, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah. I mean, it's really yeah. the amount of extra disk space you need because that's always a premium, right? Is um, not a problem in doing it. Uh, so that's the other advantage. Which you'll see, Vivid. I hope to shoot a video in the morning. I have. Uh, my MacBook serving up a web server, and I have a little um, twenty-dollar router box that can be battery powered. The Exos and the MacBook all log into the router, and the Exos go to a, in a web address and pull down a page. And on that page, I have your green screen video converted to OGV. Oh, nice! And uh, but you know, it's it's slow going coming down into an Xo one. Um, and it yeah. struggles to play it, but uh, uh, but I was thinking of the event theater as just such a a much more efficient way. 
Exactly. Yeah, that that would be good. Yep. And then basically, okay. All right. So then I just sort of did that. Mm -hmm. And then the advantage is I can publish it and I get an icon button. And now I can replay that whole thing just by clicking on it. And didn't you say there was a um like a timeline like feature where you could even put in thought balloons or annotations after the fact? after the, so can you go back in and um it's or, nah, it's not that good. There is a timeline feature which uh -huh. has a piano roll type thing. Uh -huh. um, this is doing the playback. So if you sort of take event theater here and I hit record, um, and I'll just drag this here, and I'll make a copy and do that. Uh, I'll escape, and then if I hit... Yeah, that shows you sort of the script of what's going on, right? So if I actually took a long time doing certain things, mm -hmm. I could, I think, everything's an object in Eto. I can actually, oh, let me move this mouse sequence a uh, little bit this way and delay it a little, uh, right? So, I mean, how much you can really play with that, I'm not so sure. Oh, I can, I never knew that. So you can make it shorter and longer or compress things too. Um, yeah, it's, you have to get it right the first time when you use event theater, mm. and also you, it detects mouse position, so you have to move your mouse slowly when you do it, and uh. keep your mouse within this window. If you put your mouse outside the recording window, um, you'll have problems, or if you move too fast, you'll have problems. So try and move slowly, I turn, and keep everything within here. Cool. My wife just knitted her first glove. <laughs> You're, and you're knitting the gloves. <laughs> and, and we are. <laughs> okay. So, oh, you fixed the pinky. Very good. All right. So that's a nice way to do it, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I'll just abandon that. So event theater is a nice way to give training to people in the field who may not have high bandwidth. Um, so I think what would be good to think about is, you know, what are some of the key concepts? We rambled a lot, but gee, it'd be really nice to teach A, B, C, D, and then get Kathleen to create more beautiful videos of A, B, C, D. Or, you know, we we could sort of do it in event theater. Yeah, and I th and this is just so the teachers in the field in Zambia or Haiti or wherever can yeah. look at it and come up with ideas from it, or kids. Yep. No, I mean, I start Monday the 18th, and my and uh, Internet's going to be very limited. There is electricity. I'm faking the Wi-Fi, and at, at least that's going to be working, and then as a, as a local bubble of, of connectivity. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get, like, three or four hours a day, you know, probably more around three hours, um, uh, because the kids have classes and there's different schedules. So uh, even with... Uh, six or seven days worth of training. I mean, you know, um, and I have to recap the existing lessons, do some basic intro. You know, some of the stuff you've shown me is really, you know, going to be ready for a phase, like like a, a next phase. Uh, yeah. Some of, some of the kids haven't seen e toys in a year since they last worked on the lessons. Um, but you know, they're but we're committed to it. And uh, those people from the Ministry of Education, and uh, this this is also a beginning of us. The library is adding a, a a STEM component, which they really need. They've got drama, and you know the books, and uh, mentoring, mm -hmm. and you know they really need a strong you know digital STEM kind of component that's more than just ooh we got some cool laptops and you know started to do some some lessons. Uh, and then, and then they they hope to use that to attract, um, you know, a a big internet service provider so they can get connectivity, 
and the pitch can't just be, well, give us connectivity for free so people can hang out on the Internet. It's give us connectivity because we have eToys and Lego and Makey Makeys and, and hackathons for kids and all this cool stuff that having bandwidth would be great for. So yeah. it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, it'll be a buzz. When do you get back? Uh, the 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 fifth, and I'm gonna uh, like rest on the sixth, and then <laughs> go back to work. And then I have to be in Chicago a couple of days later, so it's it's go go go. Yeah, um, I hear you. But yeah. I should have, I'll have connectivity, and I'll be posting and on Facebook and Twitter as much as I can, and um, uh, you know, it'll be the beginning, hopefully, of some regular trips. So yeah, and we'll, no. get, we'll get you there, hopefully. <laughs> That, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, it's a great idea. When you get back, the one thing I need help with, I got to find somebody who can help me. I got a couple old XOs. I got to figure out how to learn how to repair. Oh, sure. Yeah. That would be good. Maybe when you get back, or if Christopher, I'll find somebody. Oh, uh, that's, I mean, there's people. Yeah, I mean, we could do a hangout, or you know, and, and there. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I, I cannot brick them, and I'm not at Christoph's level, but uh, I have all the the doodads, and we're not. Not far, even physically, to to drive up. Yeah, it's um, not bad. But when do you when do you go to Haiti? Um, I think March fifteenth to the twenty fourth. Okay, that's not yeah. That's seventeenth to twenty fourth, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and and I think I saw your email. Like the was one one or two of them. Were one of them just completely dead, or it. So, um, so thank you, folks. We're going to end the broadcast for now. Uh, yeah. Take care.